With regard to Ethereum, you know, I think Ethereum's a security. I think it's pretty obvious it's a security. It was issued via an ICO. There's a management team. Uh, there was a pre-mine. There, uh, there's a hard fork. There's multi, you know, there, there's continual hard forks. There's a difficulty bomb that keeps getting pushed back. The difficulty bomb is going to wipe out the entire ETH mining industry. It's going to it, it obliterate it, murder it, okay? The fact that somebody is able to murder an entire industry and then they keep changing their mind every six months about whether to do it or not do it is indicia that it's a security and not a commodity. For it to be a commodity, there can't be an issuer. And the truth is you can't really make decisions. I mean, one of the, one of the fundamental insights in the crypto industry is is the fact that you can change it is what makes it a security. So if you look at most of these cryptos where they have hard fork after hard fork after hard fork, the problem with a hard fork is that changing the protocol means that some development team is making a decision. And, and if you can change the protocol in a material way, you can change the monetary protocol, right? A hard fork can change the issuance pattern or can change the value of something. And so that makes an investment contract under under securities law. And that means it passes the Howey test. So what you want is, is a completely decentralized protocol where nobody can change it, even if they wanted to change it. So fundamentally, the problem with Ethereum is they keep changing it right? Uh, from a securities law point of view. Right. And there's a team of people that make recommendations and want to establish yourself as a digital commodity. Then you're trying to create something like gold in cyberspace. So, for example, no gold miners in the world could change the, the physical characteristics of gold. Right? If a government passed a law, I mean, they wouldn't send an email saying, oh, gold is now steel or steel is now aluminum. Right. You can't if you can change the characteristics of it. Right. Then it's not a commodity. It's a security and securities have a place in the world, but they need to be sold to the general public pursuant to a disclosure, full and fair disclosure. You want to take a company public. You have to disclose who owns the, the, the company. What are the risk factors? I mean, in, in theory, you can create another digital commodity, but uh, you can't leave on. You can't leave questions uh, unanswered. Oftentimes people in the crypto industry, they think, well, we'll just resolve this by taking a vote. Taking a vote doesn't make something decentralized. If 51% of the people vote to double the supply or, or like, if you look at the Solana thing, Solend last two weeks ago, the fact that you can vote on something is, is proof that it's a security. If it's truly decentralized, then you have to release lease the protocol into the world and not change it, not even not even contemplate changing it. In fact, you know, that one of the big problems with all these proof of stake networks is in order to get them to work, they have to keep doing hard fork after hard fork. And the reason they're doing it is because they're they're putting the security into the software instead of into the hardware or into the physics. If you're relying on the physics of of the network with proof of work, then you don't have to keep upgrading the software. If you keep upgrading the software, then then someone's got to write the software. And when you write the software, you end up with this exploding complexity and then you have to, you know, you have to keep changing it. And so this this pursuit of functionality and performance via continual upgrade, that's that makes you a software company. So that I mean, that's the challenge in the crypto space that um, really they're just all securities. And, and the problem with it is they're all securities trading on exchanges that don't have a license to trade securities. And they're being traded by management teams that haven't issued a registration statement, which means they're non-compliant securities. But what I know is there's a lot of uncertainty. So you're either a speculator or you're a venture capitalist and you're waiting and uh, to see what will happen. And, and uh, Bitcoin is different because it's proof of work based. And ultimately, you know, there was no ICO, there was no pre-mine. Nobody could change it. Nobody wants to change it. It doesn't need to be changed, right? And so you would, you would generally think, you got to think more like genetically, you know, like uh, 
that's that's what you're trying to do with a crypto asset network. You're trying to release a protocol and not change it. And uh, and so it's one more point I'll make here, which is from a from an institutional investor's point of view, the point at which you consider trusting a crypto network is somewhere in the range of five to ten years after people stopped changing it. I mean, I would say it's after after a hard if there's a hard fork to fix a fatal bug, maybe that's okay. If you're fixing a fatal bug, or or if you're if you're um, improving the network uh, against a fatal security threat, right? Then then maybe you can get past that. But if you're hard forking to change the functionality or change the performance, you know, change the block size, anything like that, where you're changing it, it resets the Lindy clock, and you have to wait for five to ten years. After five years, it's risky. After ten years, you think, well, maybe all that combination of protocols is going to work. If someone changed materially that monetary protocol. You know, it it calls into question: Is the thing robust? Is it Lindy, right? And uh, I don't look. I, I'm not advocating Google stock or Apple stock or Amazon stock. I'm not even advocating my own stock. Like to be to be clear, like I'm an equal opportunity, uh, ambiguous, uh, ambiguous uh, analyst with regard to. Property. I'm not going to tell you to buy property in New York City or Moscow or Los Angeles. I'm not going to advocate a trophy asset or a collectible. I'm not going to advocate or opine on any other crypto. I don't know how they will end.、Uh, I'm I'm open-minded to the sense that it's possible to create things, but there are many many different ways to do it. Right. I mean, there's there's a lot of ways to create functionality. And there's a lot of models, and I think there are a lot of different countries in the world, right? So different countries and different different regulators will have different opinions, and and、uh, different management teams will do different things, and stuff will happen. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna advise you to invest in any private company. I'm not gonna advise you to invest in any public company. I'm not gonna advise you to post, invest in any of twenty thousand. Other things, I think that、uh, that those are all individual decisions that people have to make. And but、uh, you know, cryptocurrency is, is global, right? It's not just in the U.S. So even if U.S. cracked down hard from a regulatory standpoint, do you think crypto will continue to grow and gain usership in five to ten years? Digital property in the form of Bitcoin is going to grow. I think digital currency in the form of the dollar is going to is going to grow. I can't be sure which network. But I think that I think that the overall digital currency network will grow. I think that、um, other digital currencies will grow as well, but much less so. I think that the dollar is the king winner, and I think the euro may be number two, and the CNY, and then all the rest will will be small. And I think that ultimately the the currency, the digital currency, will eat into fiat currencies. Uh, the digital property, Bitcoin, will eat into properties. It'll eat into gold. It'll eat into real estate. It'll demonetize other other corporate bonds and stores of value instruments. Over time, I think that there'll be a lot of innovation in other areas. But again, like、uh, most of the proof of stake networks, they're all companies, right? And so they're private companies. And if they can, if they can come public, maybe they'll be, you know, the next Google or the next something. But The way I think about them is, I think of them as technology ventures, a la Instagram or Snapchat or, or something like that. And you manage your risk accordingly, right? I mean, do you trust the people doing it? Do you understand the regulations? So I, it's what happens. Who knows what happens, right? People tend to get very sensitive when money is at stake, as opposed to other things. But people are sensitive about a lot of stuff. So. So, if you want to invest in technology, then、uh, you go and invest in technology. But just keep your eyes open about what the risks are. The regulatory risk is huge if you're going to move money around. And the reason that Bitcoin works is because the use case is property. It's I'm buying a block of money. I'm holding it for a decade, and I'm not moving it around. At the point that you want to move the money a million times an hour, and you want to move it to a thousand or hundred thousand counterparties, 
you start to cross uh, into other regulatory jurisdictions. Right now you're dealing with the Treasury and the OCC and you're dealing with tax issues. And so if you're going to get into those use cases, uh, the, ulti- the big question that everybody in crypto has got to ask themselves is why is it that Google hasn't already done this? Because Google has more money than God. Why has, why has Amazon not done this? Why has Citadel not done this? Why, you know, why has Apple not done this? Why, why has a, a centralized company running in Silicon Valley not done it? They all have infinite money. They all have infinite programmers. And if the answer is because they thought they'd get shut down by the regulators, then you have to figure out how you're going to deal with that. Right. And, and if the answer is they could do it, then the question is, do you need need a token or not that the challenge with funding anything with a token is a token looks like equity if there's a management team and it's giving the token to itself or it's selling the token to an investor it's equity and equity is a security (laughs) and securities could be sold pursuant to full and fair disclosure and there's always a bunch of laws around them so if you're actually ducking all those rules then you got no competition. And the reason you have no competition is because it's illegal and unethical, right? So you got to make sure that you work out the law and work out the ethics. And if you're, if you're an entrepreneur in the crypto world, and after that, if you're an investor, you just got to have a very, a very, very thoughtful opinion about, about, uh, what is this thing I'm investing in and how is all this going to work itself out? Right now, it's just a very murky world.